All right, so let's talk about an abrupt junction HPT. Um, again, this is in the context of having different uh, heterojunctions available, different material choices, and let's see what we can do with that um, here. So let's imagine we uh, have the following heterostructure that we created. Under forward bias, we have a large band gap material on the emitter side, and we have a smaller band gap material on the uh, base side. And um, we have um, band offsets here, delta EV in the valence band, and we have um, conduction band offsets here, as indicated here. Okay? So, with the given lectures that we just had, you can imagine you can build such a thing. Okay, how would you do transport through such a uh, structure? if you're looking at the uh, uh, electron flow. Well, since we have a heterostructure there, our drift diffusion approach really doesn't work, and we resort to the very same methodology that we have used for the um, metal semiconductor junction. We lose, use thermi uh, thermionic emission, okay? So, we can write down the electron flow uh, of the from the base to the emitter uh, with the uh, injection electrons um, that we are, that are governed by the base. So these are the minority carriers, but we inject them uh, with a particular velocity, and we have to overcome... Oh, so this is the uh, current going backwards, sorry. We have to overcome at least be high enough in energy of uh, this delta EC, okay? So this is current going this way, as I indicated below, the purple vector. Now, that must be the same, just like what we did in the um, um, metal semiconductor junction before, that must be under zero bias, the electron current, okay? And so we can write down this electron current um, flowing forward, and it has this conduction band offset in it, it has the forward bias exponential in it, it has the velocity in it, and the uh, effectively the minority carriers on the base side in the NIB over NB, NB, okay? All right, for the holes, nothing really has changed here. It's a smooth junction. Um, uh, we can just use the normal expressions we had before from drift diffusion, okay? So no change here for the uh, uh, junction uh, flow for JP going in from right to left. Okay, we can calculate a beta from that if we just take the um, uh, uh, electron and the whole current that is flowing like this, and we have the ratio, again, uh, between these two. And um, what we see is we have this term again, this NIB squared over NIE squared, which has the gap in it, so we know what that is, but we also have this expression delta EC in it, okay? And that stems back from effectively the reduction of flow where electrons have to uh, overcome this uh, uh, conduction band edge, okay? Now, if you multiply these terms out, you find that beta has this term delta EV in it, okay? And delta EV is positive, okay? It's a positive value. So beta is increased by this exponential, significantly increased, um, if you make this delta EV large to compare to KT, but it's only the valence band offset that is entering here in this junction, okay? Now, um, in a way, we'd like to be greedy. We would like to have the, the whole um, uh, difference in the band gap be advantageous for the electrons, and we'd have to come up with a way on how to do that. But if we just um, uh, have um, have this abrupt junction in this NPN configuration, the only gain or advantage we get is from the delta EV. So we'll need uh, uh, the 
to get the full gain, we need another junction. And uh, so we'll, we'll try to do that where we have the full gap, okay? Not just the partial gap. So we need to kind of get rid of this thing here, okay? All right. So let's hope for the better gain that we had. Uh, and for that, we need to go to the graded junction. And we'll talk about the graded junction in the next segment.